what I want you to know is that the thoughts and feelings that you focus your attention on, on a daily basis, on a moment to moment basis, determine the way that your cells express their DNA. And this actually affects how you look, how you feel, the vibrancy of your skin, the lusciousness of your hair, the way you stand, the thoughts and emotions that you are paying attention to and that you are allowing to occupy your consciousness, your field of awareness, what you're focusing on is like, you're, it's almost like you're holding it in your field of energy. This energetic field actually determines the way that your cells express their DNA. So the cutting edge discoveries that we've made in the fields of epigenetics, which is a scientific field that talk that researches what determines the what controls your genetics. Basically, epi means above and genetics is your genetics. So epigenetics is literally above genetics or what is determining how your genes are expressing themselves. You see, in our culture, it is very, very common to think and feel that your the way you look and the way you are is stuck. It's set in stone. And if you want to change the way you look, that requires a lot of hard physical work, either working out at the gym a lot, like a lot, or actually going in there and physically doing surgery on your face, your lips, your body, like liposuction, this kind of stuff. You need to actually physically manipulate your body with your hands (laughs) so that you can change it. What I'm going to be sharing with you in this video is the science of manifesting your appearance so that you can look the way you want to. Now, this is not something that I really care about. Like, I actually don't think too much about manifesting my appearance. However, I know there's many people out there that do. I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and I was explaining to her the recent things that I've been studying. And she was like, Adam, this is amazing. You should make a video about it because there's so many people out there that want to manifest their appearance and you should share it. So that's what I'm doing here. The perspective that I'm bringing here is not that I manifested my appearance. That's not really what I even care about, honestly. I'm completely satisfied with the way I look. And you might say, well, Adam, you're just born extremely handsome. And I would agree with you. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. But what I've been studying very deeply for the last eight years is how reality works on a deep metaphysical level. And what I've been discovering is that what we've been taught in school and in our general culture about how the mind interacts with the physical reality, so including your body. What we've been taught about this is absolutely 100% off the mark. What I've discovered, without a doubt, your mind and your thoughts and what you choose to give your attention has a massive impact on the way you look and your life in general, the way your life looks. So you can imagine your body is just a reflection of your habitual thought patterns. And the more you focus your thoughts on how dissatisfied you are with how you look, so normally you look in the mirror and you immediately notice all the things that are wrong with your face. You you notice your pimples, your eyebrows, your teeth, and you just kind of zoom in really close and you're just like, you notice every single pore and every single blackhead in your skin. And what are you focusing on? 
you're focusing on what you don't want to look like. <laughs> so then what you do, what many people do, I used to do this when I was younger, is to buy these expensive creams and do so much work on your look. And I know many girls that are like totally obsessed, like neurotically obsessed about how they look to the point where they're trying all these different products and they're popping every single pimple and they're just constantly manipulating the way they're, they look and the way they're manipulating it is in this very forceful kind of hands-on, like it's a very heavy-handed approach. You're like actually sticking your hands in there and like manipulating your body. And of course, you got to do this a little bit. You got to care about like I shave my beard and brush my teeth and put cream on my face and brush my hair and shampoo and stuff. So obviously you got to do like the basic health stuff. But what we're going to be talking about in this video is how to take the inside out approach. Not the outside in approach because see... The, what you're doing when you're when you're you know getting plastic surgery, for example, to fix your lips or to fix your nose or whatever, what you're doing is you're looking in the mirror and you're not satisfied with how you look. So what this creates is this feeling, this internal feeling of lack, of anxiety, dissatisfaction, this feeling of inadequacy. Like I don't look pretty enough. So I need to do something to look prettier and then this will raise my social status. This will make me have a better life. Other people will like me more. I'll feel more confident and I'll just enjoy my life more. I'll be happier. So you're taking the outside in approach. So you go out to like actually fix your face physically with your hands and actually do something about it. And you're trying to gain inter an internal state of satisfaction by taking an external action. Now again, I'm going to repeat again, of course, you have to do basic external things like brush your teeth and floss and you know, you can still put on makeup and do that kind of stuff. That's completely fine. But that is not the core thing that determines the radiance of your internal beauty because beauty is an inside out thing especially as a woman as a man it doesn't matter we all have masculine and feminine energy so the way that you look is actually determined by how you're feeling and we're actually going to get into the science of how the way you're feeling literally changes your gene expression. This is very profound and very mind-blowing stuff. So the way I kind of noticed that this topic is real and is actually not just some fluffy manifestation, skip around and cross your fingers and visualize and you know sit on the couch and hope to get results in your life, but it doesn't actually work. Someone's just trying to scam you. This word, manifestation, gets... A, uh, a lot of random people just like posting all like, oh, manifest this, manifest that. And it, get, it gives it the whole law of attraction space a bad rap because it's now associated with being impractical and unscientific. But when you go really, really, really deep into the science like I've done for the last eight years and you actually study things like quantum physics and epigenetics, which we're going to talk about, then you see that law of attraction is actually the laws of physics. <laughs> so it's extremely practical, but you need to know how to apply it properly, which is what we're going to talk about. So what I noticed is that when I was hanging out with my girlfriend, I noticed that the energy that I was giving off to her and the way I was talking to her and the, the image I had of her in my mind actually determined the way she felt and literally the way she looked. 
This is very deep because in Tantra, I don't even like using the word Tantra because a lot of people are full of shit when they talk about Tantra. But in Tantra, they, they talk about the masculine and the feminine energy. And your whole life is this interplay of masculine and feminine energy. The feminine represents the world, the dance of forms, the actual form, the manifest realm, the manifestation of form, the world, the things that are actually in form. Now, the masculine is your consciousness and your attention and what you're choosing to focus it and direct it on. The masculine is a lot about cutting out distractions and unwanted things to only focus on the one thing that's wanted. So the masculine energy in you, in all beings, is this directed attention. This is very deep. I'm talking about the structure of existence, okay? The, the feminine energy is then the, just the dance of forms, all right? So life is kind of like a mirror. And this is what I noticed when I was talking to my girlfriend what, or just you know, hanging out with her was that she mirrored my attention. So when I, in my mind, was thinking that, for example, she's a bitch or that she's ugly or that you know she's annoying or that she's a pain in my ass or whatever it is, the feminine, the world, will be all of these things for you, of course, because the feminine is the, the it takes all different forms. <laughs> sometimes life is a pain in the ass, sometimes life is beautiful and magical. The same with your girlfriend, <laughs> or if you're a girl, this, this is, you already know this, you already know what I'm talking about uh, intuitively. But what I noticed is that when I focused on those negative thoughts about my girlfriend, then that subtly was in my energy field. So it, it determined the tone of voice that I was using, the way I looked at her, the way I was breathing even. It's so subtle. It's holistic here. And then the, the, the way she looked and the way she acted was even more ugly and annoying. And this is not a, a personal thing about her. You know, she's the most beautiful, amazing person in my life. But in that moment when I'm unconscious of how my attention affects her expression, then I, I, I basically got what I was looking for. I, wasn't, I was unconsciously creating my reality to be what I don't want. So when I learned that when I genuinely believe in my heart and my soul that my girlfriend is beautiful, is intelligent, is not annoying, but she actually considers my needs and, and she is considerate and kind and sexy and all of these things, then I talk to her differently. I look at her differently. I have a different tone of voice. It's more fun, more loving. There's more love. I love her more. When I love the world, when I love her more, <laughs> then she mirrors back to me more beauty and more love and more kindness and etc. So I want you to be able to read between the lines here of what I'm saying. This is true if you're a girl because as a, as a girl, you have attention as well. You have a masculine as well. So where you're directing your attention about yourself, how you think about yourself, <laughs> determines the way yourself actually is. This, is. this is something I want you to actually notice in your experience. When you are in a really good mood, if you're a girl, or if, if you're a guy that has a girlfriend, or you're talking, or even just with yourself, because as a guy, you have feminine energy as well. It's just not as prominent in most cases. These are generalities. 
Of course, there's exceptions. Some girls are more masculine and some guys are more feminine. There's exceptions and the edge cases that, that's just less common and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly normal, normal and healthy as well. But 80% of women have predominantly feminine energy and then 80% of men have predominantly masculine energy. So when I use these generalities, that's what I'm referring to. There's edge cases, that's fine. What was I saying? So when you're a woman or when you're a man, you need to pay attention to the thoughts and emotions that you are focusing on and how you feel about yourself. So I want you to tangibly notice that when you are living from your heart, you're living in a state of love. You're focusing your attention on the things you love in your life. You're taking time every single day to actually visualize. I highly recommend using the Platt technique. I've made another video about it where you actually have to pause multiple times per day because this visualization law of attraction stuff doesn't work if you do it for 10 minutes in the morning and then the rest of your day you ha you just fall asleep and you just you know do all the same shit that you normally do the plat technique works so well and that's what I use in my coaching program with my clients and the reason why we get results so quickly is because the plat technique re requires you to stop pause and visualize 30 times per day, but only for a minute. So an action step here is 30 times per day, you can actually stop and attune your emotions to the body that you want to have. So visualize already having the body that you want to have. And you can even include already having the life that you want to have because your body is just the manifest forms and so is your life. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing here. They're, they're connected. So visualize, stop what you're doing whenever you're like about to do something. You're about to brush your teeth. You're about to get in your car. Before you do that, stop. Take 30 seconds to a minute. There's no rush here. You know, when you're in a rush, you're in a state of lack scarcity. It's not enough time. I got to hurry up. <laughs> so stop <laughs> and use the plat technique. I've made another video about it. You can, you can even just visualize. You don't even have to use the plat, but it, I recommend it. Visualize the way you want to be, the way you want to look, the way you want to feel as if you already have it now and don't look at it from a distance. Actually step in to that version of you actually be it now first person you're not looking at your ideal body from a distance like a picture in a magazine or like a, a, a movie no no you're in it you actually got to step into the body <laughs> that you want be in it feel how it feels use it enjoy it C brush your beautiful long hair do your eyebrows or whatever you like to do with your beautiful, amazing body. Dance, sing, you know, put on clothes that you like. If you're a guy, maybe, or, you know, girls do this too, whatever. I'm, I'm using uh, stereotypes here, but you can, you know, work out and, and do the, you know, sports and the stuff you want to do with your body. Parkour, jumping off buildings, whatever you want to do. Be it in the moment and you have to reconnect to this many times throughout the day because you have to recondition you have to recondition your energetic habit patterns your thought patterns and your emotions law of attraction does not work unless you do it consistently in each moment i am now the version of me who I want to be. I am already it. I don't need to do some physical thing to get the way I want to feel. I have the way I want to feel now because I have the plat technique. I, and <laughs> I hate saying that because a lot of people don't know what that is, but I did make a video about it. So check it out. I have the way I want to feel now. I am who I want to be now. So why does this work? What is the science of this? So in 
his audiobook, Dr. Bruce Limp- Lipton, the, the book is called The Wisdom of Your Cells. Dr. Bruce Lipton described his discoveries in the field of epigenetics in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and the book was written in 2009. I recommend purchasing, I think it's only on Audible or only in audiobook format. Buy it, listen to it, it's more detail. But basically, what Dr. Bruce Lipton discovered is that your DNA is not something that is set in stone. Or let me rephrase that. In our culture, we think, there's many people out there who think that they are stuck with the body that they have now because of their genetics. So many people curse their genetics. This is a, a, called a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Many people have a fixed mindset. They think that their life and their body is just like their delta hand of cards and they're stuck with that. They just got to kind of deal with what they got. Like, oh, I, I'm, I'm fat because my mom was fat and her mom was fat. Or uh, I, I have this disability because my mom had this disability. I have a big nose or whatever. I'm ugly because it's my mom's fault. She gave me her big nose or it's my dad's fault or whatever. So this, this is a very common thing. People will blame their genetics for many things. It, you'd be surprised how many things people blame their genetics for. The way they think, their, their intelligence, their money situation, their relationships. You can blame your entire life on your genetics, and many people do. This is the difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. So what in the, in the 1950s, we basically discovered DNA, and what this kind of led to was this false narrative about how DNA is what controls how your life unfolds and how your body grows and looks and is. So there was a lot of propaganda in that time in the 50s where the newspapers were publishing articles like scientists discover the secret code that controls life. So we discovered DNA and we thought that DNA was what determines life and what controls life. What Dr. Bruce Lipton explains in a lot of detail in the book is that DNA, first of all, if, if, you're not, if you don't know, is held in the nucleus of the cell, which we thought was the brain of the cell. You've probably heard that the nucleus is the brain. The brain determines all of the instructions and, the, and the, the brain gives the instructions to the cell, tells it what to do and how to act and how to behave and how to grow, when to give out waste, when to develop and evolve, and etc. So we thought the nucleus is the brain of the cell. This is probably what you were taught in school. What I've discovered, like many things that you were taught in school, is that that's not true. And Dr. Bruce Lipton explains that the, de- the nucleus is not the brain of the cell, but it's literally just a storage container for the instructions of how the cell could potentially manifest itself. This is very deep. So the DNA is basically not the brain of the cell, but it's actually like the the gonads of the cell or the sperm of the cell. It's like just the raw DNA. Like when a, when a, a man fertilize, uh, the sperm fertilizes an egg, all it's doing is it's just bringing these DNA instructions and implanting them into the, into the egg, into the ovum. So the nucleus is not the brain of the cell, it's the, just the, the carrier of the DNA. It just holds the, the, the blueprint, the, the manual for how the cell could express itself. Now this is really weird. Because now the question is, what is actually controlling the way the cell expresses itself? Because if the nucleus isn't the brain, then what the hell is going on? Like, how, how is the cell living? What, like, how is it behaving and responding to its environment? And that's the key. So 
I, I'm not going to explain uh, the entire book, but long story short, what Dr. Bruce Lipton discovered is that the actual brain of the cell is the cell membrane. The barrier that's around the cell, it's made of many phospholipids and fatty acids. It's, it's like this, it's just like this, this barrier, this boundary. That boundary is what interacts with the cell's environment. So what Dr. Bruce Lipton discovered, the thesis of the whole book is that the cell's environment determines how the cell expresses its DNA. Because a lot of the DNA that's held in the nucleus is not being expressed. It's just like a, a, a big collection of all the potential instructions for how the DNA could potentially manifest, but not all of your DNA is active right now. Only parts, little tiny parts, maybe, I, I don't know the actual numbers of it, but maybe like 10% of your DNA is actually being manifested right now. The other 90% is dormant, it's latent, it doesn't need to be manifested yet because you don't need to use it because your environment doesn't require it. Now, we're going to go very deep. You, you need to, this is like, it's all building up. So, back to the cellular level. So. On the cellular level, what determines the health and well-being of the cell, the way the cell lives, is its environment. They found when they put a cell on a petri dish with a, a toxic environment, they put toxic chemicals on the petri dish, the cell starts to get sick and it starts to behave differently and it starts to look sick and it doesn't perform its functions in a perfectly healthy way. That's because it's, it's in a toxic environment. This is kind of obvious. Like if, if you have fish in a tank and you don't clean the tank and, and you add chemicals into the tank and you put the fish into a toxic environment, the fish, the, the DNA of the fish might act weird. It might grow a, an extra eyeball. Like, you know, in these like really polluted lakes and rivers, that like corp like you know like a, a factory will dump all the toxic waste into a river and then the fish in that river have like two mouths or like two tails or like a third eyeball their dna is expressing itself in an unhealthy way because they're in an unhealthy environment so what does this have to do with your thoughts and emotions and how to manifest your looks so what Dr. Bruce Lipton explains in the book is that <laughs> when you're focusing your attention on a specific thought that you're having, for example, what that does is that that creates an energy in your body that determines how you feel. If you focus all of your attention on a horror movie, for example, you go to the theaters and you watch a horror movie and all of your attention is focused on the horror movie, that's going to affect how your energy is feeling in your body. Emotion is energy in motion. That's, so your emotions are going to change, your energy is going to change based on what you're looking at, what you're focusing your attention on. If you're looking at a horror movie, you're going to start to feel scared and your energy is going to be a little bit more tense and tight. Think about it. This is creating an energetic environment in which the cells of your body are living in. The cells of your body will change the way they are expressing themselves, thereby literally changing your actual physical body based on your emotions and how you're feeling and that stuff your emotions and how you're feeling that is determined by how you're using your attention and your awareness and your mind so when you go to the doctor and you're sick and the doctor just 
prescribes you some pill, it's like, oh, wow, you're sick. Well, here you go. <laughs> That'll be $500. What you don't understand, what this, the whole medical establishment, the whole culture, the whole society is very materialistic. And this society, this culture has shaped your mind to and conditioned it to only focus on the variables that are physical that you can actually physically do something about. It's an, a bias towards physical action because very, very deeply in the almost in like the operating system of your mind, very, very deeply in the core of your belief system, you fundamentally, fundamentally believe that reality is physical and your mind is like just like in like this little vat inside your skull you think fundamentally that your mind is literally like inside your brain and how could that affect actual life this is why people are skeptical about things like law of attraction. Now, of course, it's good to be skeptical in general, but you shouldn't be skeptical. Like, it's good to be skeptical in general. Of course, skepticism is generally how we get to the truth. Questioning, investigating, that's good. It's good to be skeptical. But what you, it's so easy to be skeptical of new age sounding ideas and, and you know, manifestation sounding ideas and spirituality. It's easy to be skeptical of that stuff. You know what is actually a lot more important to be skeptical about is your own pre-installed belief systems that have come to you from your culture that has a materialistic bias. It's biased towards th thinking that reality is material and physical and that your energy, your emotions, and your thoughts don't have an effect on the way you look, or the money in your bank account, or your relationship, or your life where you live. You think, oh, if I want to get a, a new house, I need to like actually like do something. Like to, I gotta work extremely hard to get it. Now. Of course, again, physical action is part of how you get results in life. So, yeah, I, I'm not denying that. I'm not saying that physical action is pointless and is not needed. Yeah, there is a need to do physical action, but what you don't get is that the type of physical action that you take and the way that you take it is determined by something deeper. It's determined by your thoughts, your beliefs, and at the core, even deeper than your thoughts and your beliefs, your identity. But another word for identity, because identity is, is, is not a good word to explain it. Another word for identity is your being, your, your feeling state, your state of being. Who you believe yourself to be and what you believe yourself to be, what you believe life is. Who are you being? Are you being a stupid monkey that's stuck on a rock that's floating through space and it is just doing everything in its power just to get by another day? And if you want to change your face, for example, you got to actually like do some plastic surgery to actually like make your face look different. What if you thought of yourself, instead of being a stupid monkey on a rock, this is what everyone else thinks, and this is what you've been taught, your environment <laughs> your, your in, that you were grew up in has determined the expression of your mind, but also, and that determines the expression of your body as well. Instead of that, you need to start taking a little bit more responsibility for becoming autonomous in the way that you think. You need to disconnect your thoughts from the thoughts that have just been pre-installed 
into your mental operating system from society. You need to be skeptical. You need to question. You need to think, well, what if it actually is possible for me to change the way my body looks by changing what I'm focusing my attention on? What I'm saying is that that's exactly how it works. When you focus your attention on the thoughts you want many times per day, you can't just do it once. It's a reconditioning process. You've got to be consistent. How did the wrong thoughts get conditioned into your mind? Through repetition. This is a repeated habit that you've been taught when you're young and then you grew up with it and it's repeated. It, it, it's, it's, it's a habit you habitually focus on unwanted things. You habitually think that you're ugly and you don't love yourself and that you need to like do things to like look better. That's a habit. So in order to break that habit, you need to use the same process in which it was installed in order to install a better habit, a new habit, which is through repetition and consistency of actually stepping into the version of yourself who you want to be on a feeling level, at the being level, so that your energetic environment of your emotions actually matches the version of yourself that you want to be. This is your gift as a human being. You get to create reality. The way you envision in your mind, the way you want it in your heart. Now, you can't create any reality because many of the realities that like people try to create, like for example, people will say, well, Adam, I want to look exactly like Ariana Grande. I've actually had someone message me. Adam, what do I, how do I manifest myself looking like Ariana Grande? And the answer is you can't. You know why? Because you're not Ariana Grande. You're you. So you can manifest exactly what you actually authentically want, but you're going to have a lot of trouble manifesting goals that aren't authentically your goals. <laughs> they're other people's goals. <laughs> they're, they're images that you've gotten from the media and from culture. They're not your goals. They're someone else's goals. Why do you want to look like someone else? <laughs> Why don't you just want to look like a better looking version of yourself? So what I'm saying in this video is that you will look, you can look completely different, but more like yourself, but like just a really good looking version of yourself by taking the action steps that I'm sharing in this video. By actually stopping 30 times a day, stop what you're doing and actually pause and connect to the feeling state of being the version of yourself that you want to be. You can use thoughts, words, and visualization is very useful. Visualize in first person, actually be in it. So you can say to yourself, I love my body. I'm beautiful. I look exactly the way I want to look. I love using my body to do all sorts of fun things. I love swimming and climbing and combing my hair and putting on beautiful clothes. You can say that in your mind, but couple that with the visualization of actually being it. And what that does is that creates a new energetic environment which, which determines how your cells express themselves. You will change the way that you look. Your skin will become more vibrant. The, the way you smile, the energy that you radiate will be different. It'll be more in alignment with what you're visualizing because you are creating an energetic environment and which is giving your opportunity for your cells to express the dormant DNA of the beautiful version of yourself because your DNA has the instructions of the beautiful, skinny, healthy, strong, 
vibrant version of yourself, <laughs> but the, ex the instructions aren't being expressed. They're not being used because th the environment that you're giving your cells, they don't need those instructions for the, ver for the beautiful version of you because you're giving them the environment of the shitty version of you, the ugly version of you, like the fish swimming in the river with three eyes. <laughs> That's why to take this to an extreme, when you take this attitude of physically manipulating your face and your body to an extreme, you can watch shows like people who take plastic surgery to the next, next level because their, their mind is so distorted that they, they, they feel like they need to like make their boobs like bigger and bigger and bigger, their lips. And how do these people look that go overboard with plastic surgery? H how do they end up looking? Like kind of like one of those fish in, in the river with three eyes. And I'm sorry to say it. I, you know, I love these people too. I love you. I, I, I made this whole video to help you realize that you don't need to do that, <laughs> that you can, you can create happiness and beauty and goodness and truth internally by focusing your attention on it. All right. A lot of this stuff I do talk about in my group coaching community called the Conscious Creator Community. So if you want my personal help and a step-by-step -step systematic process for using things like the plate technique and things like that, I have a free video you can go watch called The Seven Habits of Conscious Creators. And then I also tell you about my coaching community where I actually help you every single week applying all of this stuff in your life to transform you into the version of yourself that you want to be, not only in your looks, but this relates to your money situation. It relates to your relationships. It relates to what you're doing with your life. It relates to everything because as a human being, you have been gifted with the power to create the reality that you want to create in your heart and your soul. And our society hasn't really informed you of this. So I had to search far and wide, literally reading hundreds of books, testing and experimenting on myself like a guinea pig and on my clients for the last three years to see what works and to realize like, oh shit, life is not what we were told. You have the divine power to create the life that you want. And it requires a reconditioning process. You need to change your mental habits. You need to change what you're focusing your attention on on a daily basis. So all the practices that we go over in my private coaching community are designed to help you do that. It's awesome. You can click that link there, watch that free video, book a call with me. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel because I am so excited to create new videos like this every single week for the rest of my life. Okay, maybe once in a while I'll take a week off or something. But for the rest of my life, I'm extremely, extremely, extremely excited to share with you the good news that you can create the life that you want to create for yourself. And you can do it from the inside out. And of course, you can take a little bit of action here or there. You, you got to actually make it work a little bit too. But it's like the 80-20 rule. 80%, well, it's not even the 80-20 rule. It's more like the actions you take come out of the person you're being internally. So I'm really excited about that. Go check out my website. I got a lot of free personal development resources. Very soon I'm coming out with a book list where it kind of just shares all the books that you can start researching for yourself. It's not enough that you just listen to me talk. It's good to do your own research as well. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to make it short, but it's probably like an hour long. Sorry about that, but it is what it is. Take care. See you. Bye.